Ensuring your 3D prints come out perfectly comes down to more than just a calibrated first layer and a properly leveled bed. You need to make sure that your bed surface is compatible with the material you are printing. There are almost as many bed surface options as there are materials to print, and each surface has their unique combination of strengths and weaknesses. Maximum printing temperature, compatible materials, bottom layer surface finish, and the ease of finish part removal are all things to consider when choosing your bed surface. There's a lot to go over, so let's get started. If you'd like to jump ahead to the bed surface you'd like to learn more about, whether it's one you are having trouble with or you're thinking about changing over to, take a look at the video index listed here. Glass build plates are generally made from what is called float glass. Float glass is made by pouring molten glass onto molten metal, usually tin, to achieve a uniform thickness and flatness. Having a flat, uniform surface is critical in the success of the first layer, and glass is one of the most uniform and flat build surfaces available. Installing a sheet of glass, especially borosilicate glass which has low thermal expansion, is one of the easiest ways to correct a 3D printer with a warp build plate. To use a glass bed as it full its potential, you'll want to use some form of adhesive applied directly to the surface, which are both easy to apply and can be regularly cleaned off to maintain a nice, reusable surface. Some helpful tips to remember when using glass build plates is to select one that is the correct size for your 3D printer's build plate and clamp it down using either binder clips or semi-permanently stick it down using a high temperature adhesive sheet. Alternatively, stick the glass plate to a flexible spring steel build surface so you can easily swap between different build surfaces. Additional adhesives are highly recommended for most bed surfaces to ensure you lock down your 3D prints. Some are simple but originally designed for general purposes like PVA glue sticks and others are specifically designed for 3D printing like Magigoo or 3D glue. Glass or Gerolite won't react to solvents that may be used to clean the adhesives off, like acetone or isopropyl alcohol, and Magigoo or PVA glue stick can be easily wiped off with some warm soapy water and a credit card or the rough side of a sponge. For other bed surfaces, adhesives can double as a release agent, ensuring that the 3D print doesn't permanently bond to the surface below while still providing something for the 3D print to stick to. You can learn more about when adhesives should be used as release agents in some of the other bed surface sections. For your best chance of success, you want to apply adhesives thinly to the bed. Too thick and you run the risk of the adhesive actually being less effective. You can refresh the adhesive periodically and apply another layer, but after some time you will want to wipe the bed clean and reapply adhesive once you notice significant buildup. A unique build surface made using phenolic resin and fiberglass cloth pressed into a sheet, Gerolite has found its place in 3D printing as the build surface of choice for nylon-based filaments. Other surfaces, despite being textured, made for 3D printing, or successful with seemingly all filaments, usually struggle to keep nylon locked to the surface for the duration of the print. Gerolite doesn't have that problem and is able to successfully hold onto nylon and nylon composites with ease. To increase adhesion for prints with smaller footprints, like the teeth of a gear, use a thin layer of PVA glue stick. Though it's the ideal surface for nylon filaments, Gerolite is a highly durable bed surface and is also compatible with PLA, PTG, TPU, TPE, ASA, and ABS. Layer Lock Gerolite comes prepared with adhesive and cut to size, but with a sharp knife you can trim it down for smaller build plates. Attach the Gerolite directly to your heated bed or spring steel sheet to swap surfaces as needed. If necessary, you can use 200 grit sandpaper to rough up the surface, just be sure to clean it first. Smooth polyetheramide PEI, is a popular build surface that is compatible with a wide range of materials. For most materials that it works with, PEI adheres strongly to the print when warm or hot and releases the part when cool. This ease of part removal is one of the best features of a PEI build surface. From 65 degrees Celsius for PLA to the 120 degrees Celsius for ABS, PEI works at a wide range of temperatures for an equally wide range of materials. Generally, you can find PEI in two different forms, sheet and film. PEI sheets are significantly thicker than films and are usually applied to glass beds using an adhesive sheet pre-applied to the back. In general, PEI sheets aren't intended to be flexed and instead rely on the releasing nature of cooled PEI. PEI films are what you'll find on printers that have flexible build plates. PEI film is a durable surface but a little too much aggression with the spatula, if it isn't on a flexible bed, or other scraper tools increase the risk of a tear. Important note. TPE, TPU, and PET based filaments have a tendency to bond to PEI permanently if your first layer is too close to the bed. Applying some PVA based glue stick can help prevent this by acting as a release agent rather than as a traditional adhesive. Smooth PEI is a fantastic build surface as long as you maintain it. If you find 3D prints aren't sticking or you can see shiny spots from where your fingers have touched it, 
Use some isopropyl alcohol or some soap and water to clean the oil off. If you still find prints are failing to adhere and you are confident in your first layer, scrub the surface with very fine steel wool. Powder coated PEI is a durable and versatile build surface made by coating flexible spring steel with a baked on layer of PEI. The powder coating process leaves a unique layer on the bottom of your 3D prints that hides any sign that your part was 3D printed. Designed to be used on magnetic build surfaces, part removal is a breeze. Simply lift the build plate off the 3D printer's bed, flex it, and the print should pop right off. The powder coated surface is less susceptible to permanently bonding to PETG or TPU or TPE, but care should still be taken when printing those materials to avoid damage to the build surface. To keep your powder coated PEI bed in top shape, use 91% isopropyl alcohol to wipe the bed clean of any finger oils. For more or less texture, adjust the Z offset of the first layer to achieve the desired effect. Polypropylene has some wildly useful properties. High chemical resistance, extreme resistance to fatigue, durable, but 3D printing with it can be very difficult. The main difficulty is due to it not adhering to any material other than itself. Layer lock build surface for polypropylene is specifically designed to work with polypropylene and polypropylene like filaments, like OBC. Unlike most other build surfaces, this is a material specific build surface, so if you aren't printing with polypropylene or polyethylene, you'll want to look at other build surface options. First layer height is critical when printing polypropylene. Too close, and your part will permanently bond to the surface. Too far, and it won't stick well enough to successfully finish. Magigoo PP or Smart Materials Smart Stick work well as release agents to help prevent your part from permanently bonding to the, your build surface below. Much like the other beds, you'll want to use 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean the bed of oils and adhesives. The best procedure is to start with the first layer too high and gradually bring it down to prevent permanent bonding with the build plate. Some build surfaces are able to be flexed, like painter's tape. Build tack or PEI, which means if you apply it to a flexible spring steel sheet, you can bend it, tweak it, and flex it without worrying about creasing or breaking the applied surface. These spring steel sheets are also magnetic, which means you can remove the entire build plate from the printer, get a better angle at it, and remove the print without needing any sharp instruments to pry off your delicate 3D print. Being able to remove your build surface without modification means you can have several spring steel sheets on hand to swap out to depending on the material at hand ensuring you always have the perfect build surface for your materials. Some examples of these are the BuildTac FlexPlate system or the LayerLock MagBase. Because spring steel sheets are easily swappable, you can keep a dozen on hand of many different bed surface materials, so you can also use the right material for the right job. One of the most common 3D printing specific build surfaces you can find is BuildTac. It has a slight texture to it to provide grip and can be used at room temperature or at 110 degrees Celsius without issue which makes it a great choice for printers with unheated beds or for the high temperatures needed for ABS printing. Make sure when you're using BuildTech that you optimize your first layer distance, as some materials like ABS or PETG can weld to the BuildTech if you're printing too closely to it, resulting in small chunks being ripped out of the sheet or even creating a tear that requires a replacement of the entire sheet. BuildTech is one of the most versatile bed surfaces in that you can use it with almost any material, except for nylon, nylon-based composites, and polypropylene, with the caveats mentioned previously. Isopropyl alcohol is the way to go when cleaning BuildTech. Don't even try acetone unless you want to dissolve your BuildTech. Because some materials can stick too well, adjust your first layer Z offset per material so you get just the right amount of adhesion. If after giving the bed more heat, a thorough cleaning, and proper first layer adjustments, and you are still experiencing adhesion issues, my suggestion is it is time to replace the BuildTech, which is why they're offered in three packs. While it was one of the more common bed adhesive materials in the beginnings of desktop 3D printing, capped on tape has become significantly less common than it used to be. The most common place you might find capped on tape now is as part of a wrap for a heater block on some of the cheaper printers you can find. Capped on tape is basically a nylon based tape with an adhesive backing that helps evenly spread out the temperature of the build plate while serving as a replaceable build surface in the event of damage from a nozzle that was closer than it should have been. Applications of capped on tape usually require squeegeeing it on using some soapy water in order to limit bubbles, as this thin material is prone to bubbles if it's applied dry and without care. Some printers you might find capped on tape on are Maker Gear and Craft Unique printers. Make sure to give the capped on tape enough time to cool if you're having difficulty removing the 3D print. A little time and it can be easily scraped off. If you'd like to check out how to apply capped on tape, you can check out our previous video where we walk you through the step-by-step -step process.
The simplest of the bunch, using painter's tape as a bed surface is as old as desktop 3D printing. While some of the less expensive printers you can find today may come with a small roll of cheap tan masking tape, blue painter's tape is more commonly used when that roll of masking tape runs out. Some users, and even our Matter Hackers Pro, swear by blue painter's tape and use it exclusively on their 3D printers. If you are looking to use painter's tape, make sure you grab a roll of the cheapest blue stuff. The tan rolls don't hold up nearly as well, and the more expensive tapes are too gentle to grab onto prints well enough. Blue painter's tape is best suited for PLA, PTG, or TPU and can be used with or without a heated bed. This tape is paper based so it will wear down and need replacing as spatulas remove 3D prints and nozzle gouges remove bits of it over time. When you're applying blue painter's tape, make sure that the edges don't overlap to keep a consistently flat surface and replace it frequently depending on loss adhesion or from significant tears. The perforated build plate is a thick mesh-like plate that filament is forced into for strong adhesion. By nature of extruding filament into the holes, it does take considerably more force than other bed surfaces to remove the finished 3D print, but that proves that it holds strong while you're printing as well, even with ABS. A caveat of using perforated build plates is that you have to use rafts in order for the print to be removable without damaging it in the process. There is an incredible variety in the different build surface materials that can be used for 3D printing. Some are tailor-made for specific materials, and others are a good all-purpose build service for your everyday 3D printing. But each of them is unique in their own way. Hopefully with this walkthrough, you have a better understanding of which build surface is the one you need for your 3D printer or your upcoming 3D printed project. Best of luck on whatever prints come your way. For all your 3D printing needs, bed surfaces included, check out matterhackers.com. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed 3D Printing Essentials bed surfaces. My personal favorite bed surface has to be powder coated PEI for the unique texture that you'll get on your 3D prints when you use this. If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you in the next one.